What's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here from GuitarJams.com. Uh, got a kind of funky, you know, groovy, funky, jazzy kind of progression for you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's got a few more of the fancy jazz chords, but they're chords you're going to see all the time if you're into this kind of stuff, you know, playing standards or the more jazzy side of, like, R&B. So I think it will really help. I also have a bunch of lessons that explain theory and all that stuff. Uh, right at GuitarJams.com. You can even try this site out for free for three days. I got a link right there for it. You can check it out. I appreciate it. Uh, plus Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Uh, but let's zoom in right now and I'll start breaking it down for you. Here we go. All right. This is a great song. If you're wanting to play uh, some more jazzy stuff or jazz standards, you're going to see these chords happen all the time. Uh, I'm just going to start breaking it down. It starts with the E flat minor seven chord. So that's the sixth fret barred. And then this looks like an A minor 7 shape. So it's barred across on that 6th fret. Middle finger is on the 7th of the B. Ring finger is on the 8th of the D. Then we're going to go A7, or sorry, A flat 7. So that's the 4th fret on the E string. The classic bar chord 7. It's like a major chord with a pinky off. So you got those two, E minor 7 to A7. Next, we're going to play D flat 9. And these are all chords you will see a lot as a guitar player that's playing more than just beginner songs. So the D flat 9 is the middle finger on the fourth fret of the A string is the root. And then that goes 3, and then ring finger. It's just that note is in the piano. I mean, you can play a straight D flat major, even a D flat seven, but really is the voicing. Okay, so let's do those. E flat minor seven, A flat seven, D flat nine, now G flat major seven. So G flat's right there on the second fret of the E string. I'm gonna put my index finger there. That's the second fret. Middle finger, second fret of the B string. They're on the same fret. Then, pinky on the third fret of the G, ring finger on the third fret of the D. And that A string is muted by your index finger. Okay, so let's do those now. E flat, minor seven, A flat seven, D flat nine, G flat major seven. Next two chords. We're going to call this C half diminished. It's also known as C minor seven flat five. Just know minor seven flat five and half diminished are the same chord. It's two different names. <clears throat> Sounds real fancy, but it's actually not too bad if you think of it this way, because there's already a shape that you should know that's like within the, the larger shape. So it'd be index finger on that root, which is the third fret of the A string, that's a C. So if you put your finger there, then you can form this little D major looking shape. It's not D major, it's just that same shape. So it'd be third fret on the A, third fret on the G with your middle finger ring finger on the fourth fret of the D and see there's that little shape. Last, but certainly not least, the fourth fret of the B string there with our pinky. We put that together, C half diminished. Then what's really fun, I guess it's fun, uh, if you can 
didn't play it, it's fun. Uh, index finger just slides down a half step while the rest of this shape stays. And this chord is a B major 7. Okay, here they are. E flat minor 7, A flat 7, D flat 9, G flat major 7, C half diminished, B major 7. One last chord and then you have the verse. And we're going to call this B flat augmented. It's like a B flat 7 chord with a sharp 5 in it. There's a few different names, but here are the key notes. This is how I always play it. I actually mute. I'm only playing three notes on this uh, augmented chord with the root on the E string. B flat augmented. So it's, uh, you know, index finger on the root. And then middle finger is going to be on the seventh fret of the G, and ring finger is going to be on the seventh fret of the B. Like that. But then the rest of the strings are just muted by my index finger lightly touching the strings and just the tip of it's pressing down on the root. And then the rest is muted and then I get these two fingers in there. So that is uh, the verse chords. So there's something weird if you play along with it. And uh, it's like this kind of thing. It just uh, it feels like one chord, uh, one chord short of like an even amount of bars the first time it goes through, like. It starts over right there. See, I'm already going. So listen for that. Check this out. So what it does is it turns itself back around and doubles up on that E minor chord. Not every time though, so you have to listen for that and that's what is really cool about it, but it also could throw you off if you're like trying to play along and all of a sudden you feel like you're one chord off. So here it is where it doesn't do that. Starts over here. Check it out though. Starts over. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, there's little bass lines. You know, this is a cool part. Uh, four, five, six, you know, on that turnaround. You know, and in jazz also, you can slide a half step below or above the root notes um, anytime, you know, as a lead-in note like this. That's something you can add later, though. So let me play those chords uh, one more time. Bit, but the bass line on that chorus so it's that so there's that extra G flat major 7 if you can get there in time But 
I think, you know, just when I've seen people doing covers and stuff, it, it feels a little groovier probably when you're just by yourself on guitar is to, you know... <laughs> That was it. Hope you uh, enjoyed it. And remember, you can try my site out for free for three days in that link down there. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, we'll see you again in another video real soon. Take care.